this here is one of my favorites. My first time seeing American Bellflower was like lots of my other first season native plant discoveries. I'd never seen it before and I was blown away by it, but it was maybe a little suspicious too, because for all I knew it could have been just another aggressive weed. Those introduced plants can't add benefits to the local ecosystem and oftentimes they're crowding out the ones that can. Biking down a trail by the Rock River, I discovered an American bellflower. I was surprised by both its height and its clear and white purple color in the green understory and the limestone of the woods. Its height and broad flowers seemed very well suited to the prairie, but obviously it chose to thrive away in the shade and the understory of the woodland. American bellflower surprised me again this last summer when it sprouted in the sun of my prairie garden. I still don't know if it'll last out in the open, but I really hope so because its placement is really, really just perfect. This bellflower is helping me learn more and more about the native bees around my garden. This is a bellflower resin bee. and probably just lives within a few hundred meters of the property. There's a subspecies of this bee that's monolectic, and monolectic bees subsist on just one plant, a single plant. Megachile campanule campanule survives because of American bellflower. This flower needs to become locally abundant, again, if I care at all about the wonderful complexities of this natural environment. It's likely that each of the 1,000 square kilometers of my county used to harbor stands of American bellflower. But that land has been converted and reduced so that today it's something less than four kilometers square. Basically, it's shrunk from a huge area the size of the Twin Cities to a tiny area the size of downtown Minneapolis. And on top of that, it's been broken up and it's fractured across cities and farmland. And it's probably just on the margins of these dark green woodlands here. In the 2.5 million square kilometer interior of North America used to be an unbroken and expansive prairie in Savannah. American bellflower needs to become more and more available as a native alternative to creeping bellflower, Campanula repunculoides. Because creeping bellflower evolved for a European woodlands ecosystem that's in some ways similar to the North American upper Midwest, it really does tend to do well here. And it can grow in various conditions and it crowds out other plants and it can regrow from any and all parts of the roots. It's really a nuisance plant and it's a major pain to ever try and get rid of. And though creeping bellflower might seem beautiful to some, American bellflower shares the same attractive purple, trays the sheen for a speckled silky texture and opens up its broadly spreading wavy petals and just looks fantastic. These flowers here are of the local genotype. The seed bank I'm cultivating now directly relates to the native seed bank that grew in what is now my neighborhood. Maybe on this property, maybe even somewhere in this same exact flower bed.